Well, good morning. I'm Danny Howard. I live in Sunnyvale. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a Saturday, July 29th, 2023. And I thought I'd make this little video journey to go visit the new electric Caltrain. Now, it's 2023, so the electric Caltrain is not yet in service. So they're having an open house down at um, San Jose Derridon. My thought was I would just walk down to the Caltrain station, hop the Caltrain down to the Caltrain open house at the Caltrain uh, Derridan. However, this being the Bay Area and a Saturday, the weekend service has a 90 minute gap. So I'm gonna take a bus to the bus and I'll take you along on my VTA journey. According to the transit app, the bus that uh, just stops right down the corner from my house my first bus will be here in about eight minutes, so I'm going to walk on down there after I finish my coffee. Here's me finishing my coffee. See you on the bus. Here comes the bus. I'll of course have to stop video because my phone is my fare card. The 55. So the connection, you can see one of these buses up here, the connection from the 55 local bus to the 522 is actually pretty sweet. You're going to see a 22 come up behind me. That's the regular El Camino bus. I'm going to be waiting for the 522, which is the express bus. Yes, that's a 22, so I don't need to panic. That's where it stops. Anyway. The 55 stops right across the street over there. It's a pretty pleasant walk down here. We got we got shade, we got landscaping. Um, and then the bus stop over here, it's a covered bus stop and pretty frequent service. So the 522 is just an express version of the bus that just passed us. That'll take us down to San Jose somewhat quicker than the local bus. Not as fast as a Caltrain, but much more frequent than a Caltrain. So in my case, definitely faster than a Caltrain. Today the 522 is a smaller bus. I was going to show you a little bit about the articulated bus, but this is a nice ride too. I checked the schedule and actually what's kind of neat is this makes it down to from Sunnyvale Saratoga down to where I got to stop in San Jose it's gonna be a 30 minute ride uh, a Caltrain would do the same uh, trip in 20 minutes but this bus runs every 20 minutes or so I think maybe even more frequently than that and the Caltrain as I mentioned earlier has a gap in, on Saturday morning of 90 minutes so this 30 minute ride although it's farther from my house is uh, a pretty good service for BTA as you can see behind me, El Camino is being redeveloped by the various cities along the route from uh, strip malls and parking lots to buildings that come right up to the sidewalk with uh, housing on top. And that'll be great and helpful. And I gotta say, this bus is pretty nice. Uh, don't quote me on the history here, but I wanted to share an anecdote. About a decade back, BTA wanted to build a bus rapid transit line along here. Did you do that? And they had to line up support from all the cities along the route. And what I hear is that it was Sunnyvale who vetoed it because Sunnyvale gets about a third of its revenue from auto dealers. And the auto dealers in El Camino said, no, we don't want a bus rapid transit. Uh, that might increase car congestion. They'll take out some of our parking spots. But I think the real reason is not everybody needs a car and some people are gonna come down to the car dealership with cold feet. And uh, when you're trying to close that sale and somebody's a little bit on the fence, if they look out the window and what they see is a highway, well, they gotta buy that car. But if they look out the window and what they see is a transit line, that has high quality. Uh, even today, El Camino is pretty nice. You just see buses running up and down all the time. But if 
if the car dealer is right next to a high quality transit line, it's a little easier to walk away from car ownership. And I think that's the real reason that the car dealers along El Camino Real and Sunnyvale vetoed the DRT. But um, I think over time we'll get better service. bus just let us off there. It's conveniently located, major bus lines, countdown clocks, Caltrain station beyond the vast parking lot, and the convention center, which is something that would get a lot of traffic. Here you are at San Jose Derridon, and in the distance there, is what we came to see today, the new electric Caltrain. See how there's tents? And a lot of people standing in line, like a lot of people standing in line. Everybody wants to see the new electric Caltrain. All right, so here's the situation. We get in line over there, come around this way, come around this way, go around the block. We'll get into there at some point. They'll give us tickets for timed entry to get into another line, which will then loop around over to the front of the station, around the station, down to see the train. Because everybody in the South Bay really wants to take a look at the new electric trains. Cool, so I am in group eight. At 12.15, it's 11.20 now, I'll be able to get into the line to see the actual train. And until then, we've got this cool festival area. You can learn about the California High Speed Rail. There's the Model Train Club, the San Jose Sharks, the food trucks, various lines for various things, music and entertainment, and Hella Porta Johns. There's a bike store across the street. I think I might check that out. All right, across the street is a place called Good Karma Bikes. They moved down here just last week. They take donated bikes, they fix them up good as new, and they sell them to you, the public. They just moved from their location downtown where the rent was too high. They've been here for a week. And they got some kind of cool stuff too. You're not gonna find every bike store. Here's a tandem, here's a tricycle. They got them down, they got tricycles down at Waltz and all kind of variety of bikes. So this is Good Karma Bikes across from San Jose Duradon Caltrain. Kind of a good location for a service like this. It's been an hour and a half maybe or so, but I'm getting down to the final boss here. Got my ticket, made some friends in line. Electric train tours on tracks eight and nine. Electric train tours on tracks eight and nine. Tracks eight and nine. We're getting up in here. This is the uh, San Jose Duradon experience. Going down the ramp and going through the tunnel. At the far end is the VTA light rail. I think I'm um, coming up to the line, the final line for the train tour. The final countdown. We have not one, we have two electric Caltrains. Left to the right. We got other people over there. Oh. All the way up to the front of the trains, guys. Left all right. To the right. Okay. We're going to go all the way up to the front of the trains. Oh, I gotta go up in there. I think I'm supposed to go up in this way. When you step aboard, you get the neat video screen information. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Watching the driver operate. That is not a feature you have on the trains right now. Got the second level up here. I'm gonna keep the camera low for people's privacy. Or up. 
It's a lot like the trains, the uh, newer trains. So that's the first level. This is the mezzanine, I think you would call it. And this goes through to the next car. This area is closed. It's a very nice modern train. I wonder if the restroom... Wow, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm just taking video and I'll post it up uh, on YouTube. It'll, it'll light up red if uh, it's occupied and green if it's open and available. And we, of course, have the baby changing table feature in there as well. Ooh, can I switch yeah, it down? Yeah, please do. Absolutely. Oh, th yeah. oh this is for uh, accessibility. Uh -huh. yep. And this and is important to all us parents. The parents, exactly. Uh, is there a place to, you know, you can... Yep. Hook the bag up there. The so the bag, exactly. That's perfect. The bag. Uh, there's actually and the diaper two. goes right in there. There's another one above here oh, as well. Excellent. So. Cool, thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Here is the bike car. Very important to some folks. There's some seats for people with disabilities. There's the familiar uh, bungee cords. And a couple little seats here along the way, so... If your bike is particularly worth stealing, you can keep an eye on it. So we can make room for people standing when the train gets crowded. That's pretty nice. Some of the controversy is that uh, the trains will have a few fewer spots for bicycles and Caltrain says uh, overall there's going to be more capacity for bicycles because we'll be able to run more trains with the electric service. This gets you a, a mid-platform impression. The, uh, the lights, you can't actually see them from it. Over here, you can see the orange and yellow lights. Kind of a nice color. I like the color scheme, the black and red. Uh, it's got a very German feel to it, I think. Uh, these are, of course, designed by a German company that is manufacturing the trains in Utah. Here's a view from a seat in the top section. Got your luggage racks. Um, it's pretty groovy. Here's one of the old trains coming in. I bet it's got to be something to come in on the, one of the old gallery cars and see these cool electric these electric trains in service. Welcome to. For us, it's the future. But for a lot of the world, electric trains are just uh, old news. Placing the diesel service with electric and the railroad itself has a top speed of 79 miles per hour, call it 80. And so these trains will operate at a top speed of 79 miles per hour. However, electric trains accelerate faster than diesel trains. So these trains will provide a faster service. They'll be able to run the trains more frequently and closer together. Uh, one fact I heard that I'm not 100% sure on is that the Baby Bullet service will be able to make the run San Jose to San Francisco 15 minutes faster than it currently does or with making additional stops. So that's exciting. Uh, what'll happen in the 2030s is this will become part of the high-speed rail system. The track speeds will be upgraded to 120 miles per hour and these train sets are capable of running at 120 miles per hour. So the the speed between San Francisco and San Jose, I think it's roughly 30, 40 miles. So that's something that could be done in a half hour. So that's very exciting. And that wraps up my tour of the new trains. We're looking forward to next year. So it's a half hour wait to catch a train. And there's all these beautiful buses here but I have a slight chance to catch a 522 back to Sunnyvale. So I'm hustling over there right now. We'll see if I get lucky. So here we are, there's a 22 coming in four minutes. That's the local bus. Instead of waiting around for 28 minutes for the 522 or half hour for the Caltrain, I figure I'm just gonna catch the next local bus because then at least I can sit and relax and look out the window. A neat feature on the articulator buses is you can board at the back door, 
tag your clipper and store your bicycle in the bike rack there. The only catch I've seen with this is that uh, in the past several years, every time I board the bus in the back, that irritates the bus driver to some extent. So it's a really cool feature that they've got, but maybe some of the details have yet to be worked out. Oh, oh, oh! So, there's a demonstration of what I was saying that the uh, rear boarding with the bicycle gets a little awkward. All right, so I shake it up a little bit. Uh, Transit app gave me the advice that well, you could take the 520, uh, you could take the 22 El Camino as far as Santa Clara Chase Station and then switch to a Caltrain. I don't think that's the greatest advice, but for the purposes of this little adventure that I'm taking you on, it's pretty good. It's the Santa Clara Caltrain, and with any luck, you might be able to visit the Model Railroad Society. What's also funny is that uh, I was explaining the bike rack situation in the rear of the bus, and then we just happened to catch a girl having an awkward experience getting her bicycle on the bus. And what was, what was also funny is uh, when I stopped on my 22, a 522 came up, so I could have switched to that bus and got a little faster ride home. Uh, Caltrain's nice. This is going to be a 18 minute layover, I think. So it's a longer wait. But um, we're going to have a couple adventures, and the Caltrain is closer to my house than El Camino is. You can see here, I think we may be in luck. We've got the old timey band, and it looks like the door is open. So we may be able to visit the museum. All right, if you like trains, this is a place to be. This is the Santa Clara Historical Model Train Society. They've got two layouts. They've got their end gauge over here and this huge HO layout. They do a couple open houses during the year, but my advice is go on any given Saturday. They're just open to the public and doing their work stuff. And it's not quite as crowded and it's a really groovy place, especially if you just need to wait a few minutes for the Caltrain. You get to watch some trains go by. That's going to look familiar to Caltrain riders. Metro's fleet is very similar. F40 engines and the uh, Bud Gallery cars. Kind of cool, the engine yard over here is pretty noisy. You've got a couple engines here just making their little diesel engine noise. Once we switch to the electric Caltrans, this museum will be valuable. What do we see there? That's an electric Caltrain. Once the diesel engines are a historical curiosity, the South Bay Historical Railroad Society, where you'll be able to hear Little tiny diesel engines make their little roar. That'll be nice. It's our old friend again, running around the lower tracks. So we got more tracks up here. Trains, trains, as far as you can see. The thing that's neat about the uh, model <coughs> trains in here is this is the historic train depot. Check out those rafters. But there's all kinds of cool swag if you step into the other room. You'll see an old switchboard and stuff, and these great volunteers who can tell you all kinds of stuff. They also have snacks available for purchase. During the open houses, they also have a, kind of a swap meet, so you can pick up some used model trains and all kinds of cool stuff. Check out the wires. That's what we're here for. I'm going to show you something else though. Uh, this is relevant particularly to people who live in Sunnyvale because we're working on underpasses at Sunnyvale Avenue and at Bernardo. And the Santa Clara underpass is cited as an example of 
Look at this, pretty nice. I'll go down the ramp here for you. This would be a route. You could take the stairs, or you can take the ramp. The ramp if you're in a wheelchair or a stroller or a bicycle. If you're in a bicycle, you want to not be a jerk. That's one reason. There are practical reasons, but there's also social engineering reason to have this hairpin term. Now this will slow down your average bike and make it harder for them to menace other people. However, if you were on a cargo bike, that's kind of tight. A little bit wider radius turn would be great. Uh, but that's one of the design considerations when you're working on pedestrian infrastructure is accommodating a wide variety of types from people on two legs to people on two wheels to people on three wheels. Wheelchairs are very different from cargo bikes or very different from road bikes. Uh, this is a nice underpass, got the skylights. It's got kind of a nice echo. I don't smell any pee. And uh, I'm not really familiar with this, but there's some good signage here. If we want to go to San Francisco, I want to go up these stairs. If I want to go to Brokaw Road, I want to go down there. So I'm going to go, and here's another ramp. I'm just going to walk up the stairs. But that ramp also has the hairpin curve to keep people slowed down. Yeah, I'm going to take two stairs at a time. And I'll just get you up to the top super quick. There you go. And this is also kind of a kind of cool if you're into trains because along here, this is the Caltrain. There's an old train car next to the historic rail depot, which has the model trains. And over here is the regular railroad where you'll see some freight trains go by. And I believe the Amtrak's run down these tracks. And another thing that I've experienced some years back, so if you look in the distance here, I'll zoom in. That there is the old interlocking. That's where they used to control all the signals and uh, switches because up there a little ways uh, the railroads actually branch off. So Santa Clara Station, if you ever get the chance, uh, can be a, a pretty neat place for somebody who's in a trains to enjoy themselves. I couldn't make a video about checking out the new electric Caltrain without actually riding a Caltrain, right? It's nice to see a diesel Caltrain. Your days are limited. So we'll enjoy you while we have you. This one's a six car train. I see some people getting ready to go to the Taylor Swift concert, so hopefully we're getting more service today. Shoes off the seats. Lawrence coming up next. All stops to San Francisco Lawrence next. So that's two stops for me to Sunnyvale. There's the interlocking. It's a nice ride. All right, folks, once again, anyone going to Lawrence, only the very first car in the front of the train will be opening, folks. Just make your way in the direction that we're traveling towards the front if you're going to Lawrence. put together a video with all the uh I visited the Caltrain right? Yeah 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 so we'll make a vi YouTube video of the whole journey. Cool. They're recording off of the southbound platform today so probably working on the electrics. Yeah. Well, I hope we all have fun. Yeah. And that's our journey. The parting shot uh, this train is leaving from the southbound platform going north. A lot more like that. Yeah. And uh, I can totally deal with that. So long, diesel Caltrain. We'll have
have you for another year at least. Um, when the electric service starts, it'll be three quarters of it will be electric, but there'll still be diesel trains running down to Gilroy. And what they want to do next is replace those last diesel trains that'll run to Gilroy, which is not electrified, with electrical multiple unit battery powered trains. So they'll run electric between San Francisco down to San Jose. And then from San Jose, they'll continue on battery power, kind of like a Tesla. So that'll be figured out. But th by this time, maybe a, a little bit later, a little over a year, we should have electric train service. And uh, boy, uh, you can tell the public is eager to enjoy that. So I'm here in downtown Sunnyvale and the end of my little adventure today I think will be I ran into some Taylor Swift fans at the Caltrain who are trying to figure out how to get to the stadium. I gave them some advice to catch the 55 uh, to get up to Old Ironsides which gets pretty close to the stadium. They can catch the light rail. They'll figure it out. They're going to do good. And then it occurred to me, hey, that bus I told them to catch, that's going right by my house. So I started out the adventure on the 55 and I'll conclude the adventure on the 55. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna talk about one last thing here. This isn't about Caltrain, but this is about uh, active transportation. This is Sunnyvale Avenue. We have a, a very active bicycle route in here, and it's been several years of advocacy and uh, more years of waiting, but now the no parking signs are up. The thermoplastic has been stripped from the streets and in a couple days these no parking signs are because they're going to come through, they're going to reseal the street and they're going to restripe everything and that's when we expect to see at last bike lanes on Sunnyvale Avenue between Maud and Hendy, the train tracks. It's going to be a great time so yay another, another improvement that we're getting in terms of active transportation. So here's what I observed today. Uh, one, I took a bunch of different transit services and even on a weekend, people were riding the bus, people were riding the train, uh, people want and are riding transit in the South Bay, and that's a good sign. The level of interest in just seeing the electric trains, they're not going anywhere, just seeing the electric trains, they'll be in service next year. How many people wanted to show up for that? I think, uh, I think everybody was amazed at how many people there were. Uh, I think somebody told me that the, the official count at this point was 3,600 people. Uh, but just, it's kind of cool to see how many people care and are interested. Uh, so we've got the electric Caltrain service starting next year. High speed rail maybe in the next decade. Uh, BART's coming eventually. Uh, it, but even just locally here in Sunnyvale where Sometimes we've been a little slow to embrace active transportation. Just seeing that the bike lanes are coming in in the next few weeks, hopefully, on Sunnyvale Avenue. There's all these hopeful signs that here in the South Bay, um, I would say that I'm optimistic that we're moving in the right direction, that we're making it more and more possible uh, for people to make their trips without driving in a car. And not only you know are we making it happen, but people really want it. People show up to see the train. Uh, people show up to advocate for bike lanes. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. We could always be moving faster, but uh, maybe with the electric trains, we will be moving a little faster, and that'll capture some of the public imagination. So, oh, and, and the other thing is, uh, my ambition is to make this a YouTube video, and the uh, inspiration is uh, Tom over at Trains Are Awesome. So if this video ever gets made and it gets posted, and if Tom, if you happen to watch it, thanks a lot. And if you're not familiar with Tom, but you are interested in informal travel logs like this, and you are really into trains, you should check out the Trains Are Awesome channel because Tom uh, does a whole lot more content uh, and it's of the quality that inspires other nerds to, to post some stuff. So trains are awesome, bikes are awesome, buses are awesome, and uh, you're awesome too if you 
find ways to get around. Ciao.